Yaha Fiddly D doing a podcast is the life for me. Welcome to Larps and Tarps Pirate Adventure. Morgan has been down to uh, ILARP this weekend yep. for Hoist the Colours. Yep. Me and Kerry will be grilling him about his event, one that I'm very jealous I didn't get to go on. Yeah. yeah. Living, next year. living my dream, you bastard. It was absolutely, I spoke to someone about this and I said, Tom's absolutely good that he can't come. And he was Alan and he literally went, oh God. <laughs> That fucking sucks because it because your whole vibe is yeah. pirate. He literally, pirate. we went to the geek retreat um, in town a couple of weeks ago, and he literally went dressed as a pirate, which was fun when I bumped into people from work. That's so <laughs> funny. No, the pirates are probably my favourite historical event. The golden age of piracy is probably one of the things that interests me most. And yeah. I've got the costume. You have about three different pirate coats. I've got a pirate magic, the gathering deck. I've Do you got... know a lot about the history of the Golden Age of Piracy? I know quite a bit. Yeah, because I I don't know. Should we do another special pirate episode where we talk about the real history pirate, pirate history? Yeah, I yeah. have some pirate books upstairs if you want to borrow them. Um, maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, I've just been to Eversley, so this is my first ever ILARP. Uh, so that's uh, in Eversley, which is. Good four hours from here on a good day. Mm. It took me six and a half hours to get there. Um, Crazy. Because of the torrential rains. Uh, but it was... Was it a camping event when you were there? Yeah. So you had to camp in yeah, yeah, yeah. poor weather but, conditions? Well, no, so it didn't actually rain whilst we were there, apart from a little bit whilst we were having uh. our safety briefing. But I had to pitch on wet ground, so I needed to drive my tent out sill. But it was... So I got there and it's there's a lot more permanent structures on the site. So like a load of wooden huts. You have to drive through a quarry and then through some woods to Ooh. get there. So it's very much like if I, if I didn't have... It's like a real transition into the real world, well, like from yeah. the real world into Sounds the Sounds like Friday the 13th. World. If I hadn't followed the directions, it? it would have felt like I was going to the wrong Maybe. place. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was... Got there pretty dark. Um, oh, pre- preface to all this, I was supposed to be crewing this. So yeah, I thought you were. For like weeks before, I was going to be crewing this event. And then on the Thursday night, I was playing D&D and we we're having a little break. And I looked at the Facebook page and someone said, hey, I've got a free player ticket going if anyone wants it. And I was like, yes, me, please give it to me now. Oh, so you didn't end up having to crew it? Didn't crew it. I played it for free. Oh, see, um, when you were talking about it just before we started recording, um, I, I thought, wow, crewing sounds pretty easy. Yeah, you just sound like you're uh, no, just playing. <laughs> no, 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 I was a player. Um, although I, I, I got back from D&D, oh, I'm going to be playing. And they went, I have no kit. <laughs> Yeah, because they like, were going to give you kit for crew, yeah, weren't they? I have absolutely nothing. I, I, I just tucked myself into bed, ready to turn off the light, and Morgan's like, t- messages me, Tom, can I borrow your sword? Was like, this the day before or something? Literally the day before. The night Was I already before. asleep? Yeah, you were already asleep. That's you why didn't I said, tell me about this. Well, this is why I said, come and get it from work tomorrow, because Carrie's asleep, so I didn't want you banging on the door and waking her up. Literally the night before. Oh. It was about 10 o'clock. Oh, right, fair. Yeah, I'm an old man. I go to sleep around <laughs> 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, I'm an old woman. I was already asleep uh, by 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, I got, got, got the kit together. And I was like saying to Emma the next day, because I was like, Emma, I'm playing. She's awesome. I was like, I don't know what to wear. But I threw together, so I got my LARP trousers, which yeah. are like black and then they tighten up at the bottom, uh, at part of your legs. I got some long socks and brought them up kind of up to my knees. Mm. And then leather boots. I had my LARP shirt. And then I have just like a nice long coat. Um, wore that and then put a red bandana on and I came down there stand, and then was like perfect nice <laughs> firing yeah. was like awesome it's like one of those when it's Halloween and you forgot that you didn't get a costume sorted yeah. and last minute you just throw something together and you're like you know what it works oh and then like four belts yeah <laughs> like four belts borrowed your sword um, I bought a gun when I got there it was perfect yeah, I thought you were borrowing his hat for you uh, no so I was borrowing the hat for a friend that was the other thing I spent all day in town trying to find a tricorn hat because I'd already promised yours to mm. a friend and the admiral hat you gave me didn't really suit my character I tried to convince him to wear that but he was like no I want the tricorn I was like mm. fair enough yeah um, but so I had that basic kit good to go you could have just taken your computer been a downloading pirate you wouldn't <laughs> steal a car <laughs> I, was like, I was like what do you mean <laughs> Yeah. I just open up Pirate Bay. That's no, just fine. But that's just quite well. For your first ever event, you're just wearing basic kit, bandana, and then, you know, you'll be wearing a massive pirate's hat oh, in yeah. a couple of years' time. Well, also, worth my character. So I decided the night before that I was playing Branton Reed, uh, who was a gunpowder merchant, uh, son of uh, smugglers. Um, nice. Started life as a cabin boy, 
uh, and then eventually s- transitioned from that to you know being bored of that to start smuggling gunpowder. Nice. Yeah. So I think my first official question for Brandon Reed, Branton, 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 did Branton Reed get any booty over the weekend? Uh, as in treasure. Are we, are we going to have to, have to send <laughs> in the podcast? gaps? <laughs> Uh, Branton Reed got um, so the, the the way it works because yes, but I started off with some stuff. So the way it works is you pick an archetype. So unlike fucking Empire, which has got like a full character creation character sheet process. Um, so basically, you turn up, you pick an archetype, and then you fit a character to it. So there's a bunch of archetypes. Uh, Buccaneer. So Buccaneer, you can carry five pistols on your person. So they use cap guns. So ILARP is like really low rules. Um, and I know that's just a really long route to answering your question, but there's a lot of things I didn't think you'd like this lot because your thing is the rules make it fun. <laughs> yeah, but oh, the rules that you have <laughs> form the game. Um, no, it was good because you have, it's really low rules. You die when you think you should die. You take as many hits as you think you mm. should. And yeah, then, so as long as everyone's being reasonable and no yeah. one's like purposely cheating. But like, yeah, I mean, if I'm if I literally headshot someone and then like point blank, which also you're not allowed to do, but for safety reasons. Yeah. But like, but if you were like using your sword and like whacking someone in, you know, yeah. quite a lot, you'd be like, come on, you're not indestructible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But also, it's like all about doing it dramatically, and you have like a ten minute bleed time and stuff like this. Like, it's there's all... a lot of theatre kids. Well, the whole it's <laughs> it's it's um. Film sim is the idea. So you're meant to feel like you're in a movie. Mm. Um, oh, cool. So it's very much like just whatever you do, do it dramatically. Well, you know what? I do, I wouldn't mind dying if I got to do it dramatically. Exactly. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a situation like yeah, that. Yeah, this is one of the things I worry about Empire. If Uncle Nietzsche dies in a random pile of bodies, mm. I feel like it was very unceremonious. But you've at least yeah. got people to mourn you now. Yeah, that's the main yeah. thing. But a whole flock of jackdaws. If you didn't have that, you'd be like, oh, I'm just yeah, one of like yeah, yeah. 40, 50 one people move. dead. But we had, so basically everyone's allowed to carry one cap firing pistol and one uh, melee weapon. And, but then there's a bunch, and you're not allowed to reload in combat as a base yeah. rule. So if there's like people are firing you and there's fighting going on, if you're in combat, you can't reload. Uh, if you are a buccaneer, you can carry five pistols, which means that you can shoot five times before having to, before you're out of shooting. Marines can carry rifles but are allowed to reload but in combat. But do you have to have five fizz reps? Or... Yes. Oh, wow. So you have to carry five individual pistols. That sounds pricey as fuck, but yeah. you've yes. got the drip there. Yes. But then um, also that's something you can build your way up to, I suppose. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think that's what, that's the other archetype I'd be most interested in. The other one's Marine, which means you can carry a rifle and also you can reload in combat. So, sorry, what archetype did you pick? I picked Tradesfolk. Oh, of course, because you're a gunpowder trader. Because I was a, a, a powder monkey. Um, powder monkey, love it. Swashbuckler's a bit more complicated. Basically, you can if you're about to sword fight someone, you say on guard. And Tom. if and basically if the other person <laughs> isn't a swashbuckler, you have to be, you beat them. Oh. You have a dramatic <gasps> fight and then they go down. That's how it works. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, if if they say on guard that. back, that means they're also a swashbuckler. Then you so just you do, do a, that role play. You, no, you do it. You, no, you do a quick game of rock paper scissors. <laughs> oh, really? And whoever wins. Oh, sorry, no. Then the person that initiated it goes clean or dirty. If Ooh. you say clean, you play rock, paper, scissors, and whoever wins, wins. Whoever wins that game, then you act out winning the fight. Uh, if you say dirty, you can just, it's, it's basically, you can use lap safe pistols, you can use any situational props. You've got like lap safe bottles to launch at people. Lap safe bottles? Yeah, oh, anything anything goes amazing. until one of you agrees. Oh, okay. you know, if you okay. agree beforehand as well, you can so do hand to hand. So you lose, can drop stuff down, start like beating each other. If you up. lose, does that mean you you've died? You're bleeding out for ten but, minutes. So you can be stabilized by a medic of whatever, yes, whatever the word for that. In yeah. I just yeah. love the idea. Oh yeah, we're fighting dirty. Look at this LARP safe cannon I've hit in the back of Oh my god! Please go and please be a swashbuckler. Uh, I can, I mean, it would suit you. You so see, well. I'm from what Morgan's tempted. I'm quite tempted for the marine. Yeah, Marine's cool, um, especially if you can get the rifle. It's really funny, Mar- uh, rifles use party poppers. So you get a party popper, you load it in, and when you pull it, it pulls the string, goes bang! So um, what, the confetti? Or... No, you take the confetti out, but Aww. then you just have a little explosion. So you load it and put the oh, string Oh, I see, in. so it's got a little bit of gunpowder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you, it goes bang. Did you get a lot safe bayonet? Uh, I imagine you could. I didn't, but I didn't see one. But if you got, like, a squashy um, Squash- bayonet for the Like on the end of a helmet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, surgeons can heal you. Um, oh, so you can play. I mean, there's always a medic role, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
but also they have like an ability that helps them not die or not kill people. And then tradesfolk, you arrive and you pick a resource. So black powder is one resource, rum and opium, fabric, wood, Ooh. iron or food. Rub, rum, rum and opium sounds like a fun game. They are. Um, they are used for medical stuff. Oh. Um, so like... <laughs> But you also... Hey, kids, want to get high? <laughs> you could still play, like, a really dodgy character. <laughs> oh, yeah, you still do trade in rum and opium, but the yeah. rum is, like, unprocessed. So if you drink the rum, you go blind. Okay. Um, and so, that's got medical use for... Yeah, cleaning wounds. Oh, okay. Um, and then the opium is for painkiller. Um, so I had a pipe with me this weekend, so when they gave me opium, I was like, put it in here, put it in here! <laughs> Pretend to smoke it. That's awesome. Um, and then also... Don't yeah. do drugs, kids. <laughs> no. Arts and Tops does not encourage drug abuse. So I was a black powder merchant, so I got a box of black powder. Only black powder merchants can carry black powder boxes without them exploding. Okay. Um, okay. So I had Good my... Mechanic. Also, I enjoyed being... So no one can steal it. I enjoyed being really haphazard with mine and stressing people out, because I was like, it's fine, I know how to drop it safely. <laughs> and they were like, oh, please be careful. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. And then I also get like a downtime ability, which I'll go into more detail later. Um, can I just go to all the LARPs? Can I just oh, stop working it's, it's, and just spend every weekend at some kind of LARP? At the end of this event, they did, like, an advert for all their other LARPs. Fuck me. They're so, everything they do just sounds fucking awesome. Okay. Gotta play one, them all. One of us needs to win big on the lottery mm. so we can all retire and just LARP around the country. Yeah, 100%. Right, guys, sign up to our Patreon so that we can make this yeah, dream come yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, so, that was so basically in answer to you. I start the game with a box of 10 powder. Cool. Um, now, that's in its raw form. If I want to get it processed, I can go to the clerk's office, and I have to have role-played doing this, and I can turn it that raw powder into gunpowder. Which when you I then go, can sell. Go to the clerk's office, and they give you sugar packets, which counts as gunpowder. So Sweet. you you pour it. So basically, the idea is you can rip and pour it into your gun, and it goes on the floor, but it's sugar, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I start with 10 powder. That's how you yeah. get ants. Yeah, that is how yeah, you get ants. Do you want to get ants? Because <laughs> that's how you get ants. <laughs> it's outside in the woods. It's fine. Oh, is it? Yeah. I was wondering about that, like whether you had like pretend ships or anything. Yeah, I was You're good. pirates. That was an episode, uh, not an episode, question. a question on the list. Is there more permanent structure? Like Empire only has the forge, the war council's chamber, and the, the, is it not? No, the senate as well. Even the war chamber's a tent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there is a bunch of huts. I think you can build your own hut Ooh. and make it a permanent thing. I really want to have... make like an attachment to your car where you can just like build around it and make it into a pirate ship. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, because it's in, we're, we're in literally the dead center of the country. There is no sea, no ships, but yeah. we're in the middle of the island because it's the safest place oh. to be. Um, and there's loads of permanent structures. So there's taverns. There's a uh, there is something we use as a church. We had a little stall where our ship, uh, the crew of our ship, was staying. There's like, lo- there's the clerk's office. Like, there's loads of permanent structures. Shall we open a lot safe bordello? <laughs> well, Lots of there bordello. is a wild west. It, it's um, a whorehouse. Oh, okay. a house yeah, of, I thought a so. house of ill repute. repute. There is a wild west one, so it maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. There's loads of permanent structures and completely different to empire um, in that regard. Mm. That's really exciting. I really do want to go. So tell me, uh, for the uh, listeners, what's the difference in size to Empire, crew-wise and player-wise? I have no idea, crew-wise. I think there's about 100 people on site at this one, compared to 3,500 players Mm. at um, Empire. Uh, It feels a lot more personal. Like, it's a lot smaller. Yes, I've heard that from... uh, noobs at LARP talking about some of their other ones. The smaller ones, you get much more of the personal yeah. touch and you're a bit a much bigger player off the bat. Yeah, so the, you do feel a bit of a lost, lost in a sea of people. I mean, that's part of the appeal of Empire. Yeah. I think, I was saying this, they're just two very different games. Um, yeah. But I mean, when I kind of first got there, so I knew two people well, because it was the guy that plays Viridian and the guy who plays El Talibrin of my house were is going. It, is it Viridian who's the hat snob? <laughs> Viridian's the spring. Viridian man. is the one that turned down your initial hat. You're a fucking hat snob, Viridian. <laughs> <laughs> I like I've how never you, met you. I like how you don't know his real name, so you abuse him via his LARP uh, name. So Empire LARP. No, we literally we I got there and I got there late because of the rains, pitched up my tent uh, in the woods, which was mm. fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh in the dark, next to someone else I knew. I knew one other person uh, Was it Lady Bordine? So it's all woods. No. Uh yes. You're in a clearing in the woods. Oh, a clearing, yeah. Um, there was... So, basically, there's, like, a main street. So, we were 
operating around the Wild West town. There's a main street of the Wild West town, and then we were camped. I believe they do their uh, a flying lead there flying as well. Lead, like yeah, a, they do a lot of. They yeah. do a lot of them there, don't they? Pretty but they have like a Viking town, a Wild West town, and like a, a an army area. But like it's they just multi-purpose them. Oh, okay. So they just like dress them up slightly differently. Yeah, for exactly. Different um, maps. Okay. So you can see there's like a sign somewhere that they didn't take down, which talks about how the price of stuff in dollars and stuff. But it's not like it's all blarp. You just pretend. Um, but I got there, and then we all kind of congregated. They met the people I knew already. Um, there was someone who I'd met a couple of times as well who was going, who ended up being on my crew, which was good fun. And we either do a big safety briefing, so they're, like, um, talking about No how... real guns. No real guns. You have to say that, funnily enough. Oh, well, you know, um, you feel like they probably would. Talking how to deal with crew. So, don't like, when you're searching crew, don't touch them. They're, they're, they've come to play as well, so let them have fun. Yeah. Uh, don't shoot too close to people. Don't shoot indoors. All this stuff. It was really useful. Um, uh, talking to the, to the guy that runs it. Um, don't wander into other people's houses because, um, like, there's people that live nearby the site. So it's like if you come to an actual proper house, don't, don't, <laughs> don't go in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then he said, right, if you want to have been in town for a while, stay here. If you want to have just come back from the sea, follow me. So the plot for the game is that. The golden age of piracy is coming to an end. Uh, the British and the other kind of naval fleets have been buried down on pirates for quite some time. Ah, pirates... so the good guys are winning. Yes, well, yes. Um, the pirates have made, made a final stand at Nassau where they were like, come on, let's fucking do this. Let's mm. smash the British to pieces and got absolutely fucking annihilated. Every, like, all these famous pirates died. Blackbeard died. All this, like, all these people died in this big old moment. Yeah. And the only five ships remained. Um, and in that kind of chaos, those five ships managed to drag us, the players, onto their ships and go. We were led by a Captain Israel Hands, Captain of the Santiana, to a location that Blackbeard had managed to keep off the maps. So we oh. went to some island hidden away um, in the Caribbean, but with a strangely British climate. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and basically what happened was we were randomly allocated which ship had saved us. So I would, my character had been saved by the Devil's Diamond. No, not the Devil's Diamond, the Devil's Daughter. Um, and I had been injured. Kerry, they named a ship after you. I mean, that's a bit rude to my dad, mm. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kerry's dad. Um, and he liked you as well. <laughs> we had to take a massive walk into the forest to walk back again. I'd been told... So basically, they drew from a pack of cards and each suit related to a different ship. Okay. So I'd been saved by the Devil's Daughter. I had to walk in with a limp because I'd injured myself. Uh, and then get seen to by a surgeon. So um, is that like just because it was your first event? No, or it, 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 when, the they're the, when they're drawing the when they're drawing the cards. This was the first ever time of the night. It's the first ever run oh, of this okay. event. Uh, and they pulled out cards basically. And if it was a face card, it was like the suit says your ship. If it's a face, you have an injury. Oh, so I decided okay. I have an injured leg. I hobbled into town. Um, someone was so like, how like, you? "Like how you were saying that the plot comes to you a lot more." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they were, and someone was like, "Is your leg all right?" I was like, "Well, you know, it's um, I can't feel it anymore, which I think is a bad thing." Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, it, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh yeah, my character. I just was like, "What do I do for my voice?" Oh, I'll just be very northern. Yeah. So I very that. much leaned into a northern accent. I came from. I like that. Decided I grew up in Robin Hood's Bay, um, yeah. and then I'd take it to the high seas. Uh, nice. Really cool start, literally right into the pan, like uh, screaming for a surgeon. Uh, I had someone like bandage me up. He's like, has anyone got any bandages? So all the fabric merchants had uh, cloth, which had to be used mm. as bandages. So I was getting patched up and stuff straight away, kind of like thrown into it. So one question I have is, uh, do you get your pocket money like Empire? Mm. So we have all literally just lost everything. Oh, the okay. captains who are all NPCs at this point have some money and some stuff, but right. all of us have lost everything except the trades folk were able to grab stuff. So, for example, I had 10 lots of raw powder. Um, some of the truck cloth merchants had cloth. Rum and opium had that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we had no pocket money. Like, we were broke. We literally hobbled. We've lost everything. Everything I we've ever had, our free pirate republic is gone. So we are completely fucked. I declare bankruptcy! Well, the fun thing about the start of the game is we have to establish the economy. Mm. so we're yeah. like how much people are like how much do we charge for gunpowder no one's actually got any money yet and yeah. um, we, we were at the start of the game each given a piece of eight later which was the currency um but initially we had nothing we just had the resources we had 
Well, then people couldn't afford to buy it off you anyway. No, so we were, and it basically was just trading. So I'll give you this many powder for this much opium or whatever. Um, mm, you probably rob pay convoys and whatnot for the English. Well, yeah, as the weekend goes on, oh. you start to acquire stuff. Um, so we get there and there's a big talk from one of the head clerk who kind of does this big talk. It was like, Blackbeard set this island up. It wasn't going to be ready for seven years. We weren't expecting to have to be ready now. You're going to have to build this place from the ground up. We weren't ready. So our whole thing in game is getting this free Pirate Republic, this new island for pirates, up and running. There's five crews. There's five captains of five ships, and you have to pick a crew. Well, you don't have to, but you pick a crew that you're going to join, and together we're going to found this Pirate Republic. So you very much feel like you're in on the ground up. Like I every like day that. after this, we've started. I really feel like I need to get in from the next yeah. event onwards so I can actually have an impact how on many, this game. How many events per year do they have for this one? Two, I think. Oh, okay. So it's just the June or July, did you say? Oh, and yeah, October. I think I don't know how regularly they're going to do it, to be honest. Um, I guess this was, was not, a test Was run. it not really cold, though, when you went? Uh, it wasn't like it was last weekend. unseasonably warm. That's lucky. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't warm, but it wasn't I suppose freezing. it's down south as well, so it's not as bad. Yeah, when I got away with it from the fire... So you're a northerner going cold. down south, so oh, it's really cold Oh, it's tropical. <laughs> oh, bloody tropical, let oh, me tell you. Might as well be in Spain. Might as well have been Caribbean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, that was basically the start of it. We started talking, socialising, getting to know people. The captains are going around mm. trying to get people to join their crew. Um, Branton Reed is very much, uh, don't fuck me about. I don't want to fucking die for no reason, and I want to get rich. Nice. I just want an easy fucking life. Yeah, I have another character idea now. <laughs> can you be a preacher? Yeah. Oh, f- yes, you can be a fucking preacher. You should yes. tell him now. He's no, going to do it now. No, why, why would no. You? I, there's, there's a preacher in the game <laughs> who I will talk about later. If you're listening, you know who you fucking are. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, you can be a preacher. One of the captains of one of the ships was a fanatical religious type uh captain israel hands of the santiano is oh, probably religious. feeling like a fi- probably wouldn't work in the game at all but like the kind of uh iron vibe from game of thrones no, fuck it. Oh, of course that would work nice that, that would absolutely like well so, I, I was meaning it'd probably be more christianity or so, catholicism so one of the people that was there one of the npc crew was a um he was he was the quartermaster of the santiano uh, and he was kind of saying to be on the Santiani, you don't have to believe in God or, you know, Allah. Or anything. It's like you just have to believe in something. So he was like, he believes in the gods of the sea and stuff like this. It's like it could be your own thing. Okay. My cat character's opinion was God is just another boot on my neck. But this guy, unlike the king, could curse me to eternal damnation. So I'm going to try and stick on his good side. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, I worship him because it's fucking scary that he's there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, first time, first kind of kicking off uh, was was really good fun. That was how it kind of started. Ooh. Uh, so let's have a look at our questions before you get into more froth. So, who were the type of enemies we fight? Was it strictly just the English Empire, or was there a smattering of Spaniards, bandits, other things? So, uh, we, at this point, on on a Friday night, was mostly, like, uh, socialising. So, it was like, um, you know, getting to know people, talking to the captains. um, But we did hear on the Friday night that the... The British had found us. The British are coming? And we were like, yeah, but the wives aren't. Uh, oh. <laughs> that was a joke. I, I mean, that's weekend. legit, so. Uh, <laughs> Good thing I don't have a wife. <laughs> but we spent the whole weekend, um, with the whole Friday kind of socialising, we knew the British, the British had found us. They'd send a ship here, and we were like, oh, fucking hell. Fuck. We thought we got away from them, but the British were here. And we'd also heard rumours, so the ship, the chariot, had... Um, had some prisoners when we left Nassau that had managed to break out called the Hornets. Uh, we, the, sorry, crew from the ship, the Hornet. And we were worried they might be knocking about, but probably not. They probably died in Nassau. As it transpired, they got we'd, be, we'd be fighting British and Hornet crew all weekend. So, but the fact that we literally, it was no encounters. It was literally just vibing, chatting. You see, I think that's kind of what Empire misses a bit. Just time to vibe. Because mm. well, I think that's what Thursday night's for, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you've got the option to vibe, but we always just boom, oh, jump right into it. I am full vibe. But literally, we spent time in the tavern on the Friday night. I played Liar's Dice. 
Oh, um, nice. As someone who's been listening to nothing but sea shanties for the last six months, you, you, we were literally in there singing sea shanties. I picture this, you're like the horse meme from Tangled. This is the moment I have trained for. Oh, literally, we were sitting there and every song I knew, well, most songs I knew, singing them, belting them out loud. Um, oh, that's it was amazing. Awesome. Um, some of the best moments of the night were just sitting in the tavern. Like, literally, people singing sea shanties, playing liar's dice, drinking fucking uh, whiskey and rum. Oh, oh, it's fucking... To buy alcohol, is that covered at all in your ticket, or do you just use barbarian? You bring your alcohol, okay, and you put it behind the bar. Cool, cool. And then you say, I would like a glass of that one. That's actually a very good system. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, so you can drink your own alcohol in an in-character kind of setting. Uh, oh, okay. Which worked really So you don't well. have to keep going back to your tent for a refill. No, show. you can store it behind the bar. That's really, really good. It was really good. It worked really well. Yeah, does that, does, yeah that just seems like there'd be a lot of different bottles of alcohol. There is, but there's only, if you think there's only and 70, an honor system there's only well, 70 players and like people are pretty decent yeah. people. Like, Hello, barman, a, a glass of your finest box wine. <laughs> that, one, that one, please. Um, but also, the site's much smaller than Empire. Like, it, it, the, the furthest you're going to be is five minute walk from the site. Oh, that's not, it's, it's not even that. Like it's really, it's a really small site. They're gonna say you're not that far away in no, Empire. Not at all. Yeah, it's really, really small. It's really good. Um, I had a really good night, just kind of vibing, drinking, making people nervous with my uh, gunpowder, making a few connections with the other powder monkeys, meet the ships. Um, should I tell you the five ships? Yes, I think the viewers would like the five ships, and so would I. So there, there were five ships. The first one was the chariot. So the chariot, uh, the captain of the chariot came up to Brandon on the first night and was talking, we were talking, and he's like, what are you? I'm like, I'm a smuggler. What that, are you? A smuggler. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Rude. And, yeah. <laughs> and he was the, from the chariot, and he's like, we don't get involved in this unnecessary fights. We're here to get rich, get out. And I was like, that sounds like, yeah. that sounds like my fucking deal. Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Um, they have like legitimate trade routes, they have good contacts. Mm. It's all about getting money, not unnecessary killing. There's the Marengo, which is a lot of ex-military Navy people. Uh, they're a very disciplined ship and full of Marines. Oh, I kind of like the sound of Marengo, but I can't see myself being a disciplined player. Yeah, no, they're very different. Yeah. I can't see you on the Marengo, personally. Um, I could totally see you choosing a different crew to Morgan. Oh, dude, if you went on the Santiana as a preacher, that'd be fucking hilarious. Um, there was also the Diamond. So the Diamond is stealthy. So, like, you, uh, they can do stealth missions. They often sneak in and out of places before they're even noticed. That's not for me. Uh, and then there's the Devil's Daughter, which are scary as fuck. Oh. So, like, they are pure intimidation. There was rumours their chef was a cannibal. I will be the Devil's Daughter. They would literally, like, that was their whole vibe. Was yeah. they, like, don't fuck with the Devil's Daughter. And then there was a Santiana, who are religious fanatics. And all of these ships, if you're a part of them, have their own, which we a lot of us forgot about, but have their own abilities within the game for like role play mechanics yeah so if i'm speaking to an npc and i so i end up joining the chariot and i mention i'm from the chariot they will think oh this person can get me good connections and they're more likely to tell me where secret Whereas stores they say are you're from the devil's door or they'll, 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 they're scared know. and they'll listen to you <laughs> yeah. and if you're like from the marengo they'll think you're uh, like i think it was like a talented military person double uh the diamond they think you could do stealth missions yeah, so really they, they get, you've got like, like a reputation that sort of follows you. Exactly. Uh, so that was literally the first night was me talking to different people, getting to know different characters, finding out who was joining my ship, which, as it turned out, one person I knew uh, who was playing uh, Genevieve, or as I called her, uh, I think I called her Cuffs, because little hack for when you can't remember names, give them a nickname. Nice. I decided my character just gave people nicknames. So I, I was, like that. I had. I might. Uh, I might steal that for Empire. I'm not gonna it, lie. <laughs> it honestly worked fantastically. Although I did say to people afterwards, "Hey, if I've given you a nickname that you don't like, please let me know." <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I just pulled them over. Like, oh, by the way, the, 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 have to stick. There was a surgeon that was doing kind of crystal chakra healing, so I called them Crystal. I'm not quite sure how happy they were with that, but I've, but I've said like, if you don't like them, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, um, people want mine too. I much. really need to get there now and see what costumes the co- people of the Devil's Daughter come up with because I imagine you could do some. I mean, awesome you said stuff there were photographers that. there, though. To be yeah, fair, so be probably a bunch of photos. Yeah, but did they know about these crews beforehand, or now they can go so away and the, really the, get used the to the thing brief. about pirates is that they stole 
everything. everything. So as long as it fits within like 18th century vibes, oh, yeah. but I mean, like, like goes bone sticking through your nose and like you nails could, and things yeah. put into you. You fucking could do really that. break big up the intimidation factor. I remember watching Black Sails and someone wore shark's teeth yeah. before a battle. Like fuck it, like <sighs> like it was like if you're leaning into being scary. I mean, I think you'd probably. I think I don't know how they'd get new players at this point. I think the idea is that you'll have come in with a ship, mm. but then when you're there, you can decide whether you want to join one. Um, but yeah, first night, vibing, meeting people, chatting, drinking, singing yeah. sea shanties, staying up till three in the morning, singing sea shanties. I suppose if you're a new player next year, you just pretend that you were there, kind of last year, you just didn't really do no, anything No, I, I think, I imagine the idea is going to be that between now and then, first of all, a lot of the last players from last They'll time... They'll be gathering more. But a lot of the players from last time will be coming again. And yeah. also anyone that's new, we collect, yeah, we collect as you as we say around ports. Um, so we could even, always step away and stuff yeah, like that. Isn't so we it? could even do like you you got on our ship mm. uh, and you'd have to join the chariot. You just <sighs> bought passage. Can, it, can passage I be a step away? Yeah. Like um, El Dorado hide inside the water yeah. barrel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'd absolutely, to be fair, you'd actually just, it would act completely accidentally. You're on the wrong ship. Yeah. But just wandered onto a ship thinking like, that it was somewhere else. I am definitely a pirate. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. That's definitely, 100, definitely, definitely a pirate. Oh, I want to be an accidental pirate. Definitely wasn't, that sounds so good. I, <laughs> definitely wasn't I, going I, to Australia. It's like a ditzy person just wanders into different situations. He <laughs> goes, How did I get here? You see, I'd absolutely <laughs> love it if one of you were, or someone was an escapee from a pirate ship, managed to get away, washed up on shore right onto the pirate island. <laughs> Fantastic. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Aha, uh-huh, made it away. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was the, the, I guess that was the first night. Awesome first, oh, awesome yeah. start to the weekend. Oh, so I, I, I'm super, super, super You'll jealous. You'll have to get the dates for the next one. We'll come down with you. We'll rent a van. The uh, thing is, I am, or one of us is going to need to watch these ticket sales like a hawk, because yeah. apparently they go oh, fast. Yeah, they start. Oh, the other thing is, it was, I was super kit-like. Like, I had no kit, yeah. basically. I had my basic outfit, my tent. And six pot noodles and two porridges. That was and oranges and Snickers and stuff. That was it. I was finding Brandon as I went because, mm. like, literally, I had not even had twenty four hours to think of who he was. So it was like finding him as I went. Um, he ended up being more jovial than I intended. Okay, but I think that if you make too grumpy a character, then you're not going to have nearly. You're as not going to have as much fun. It's the classic D and D issue when you play like a um, like quiet, breathing yeah, exactly. character, and then you've got, to, got no role play. You've got to have a certain skill to carry off a really like edgy character. Yeah, because people did it, but you've got to have a lot of confidence to go in, kind of like head first. But yeah, that was the that was the start. I'm trying to think of anything interesting happening. How was night. everyone's costume game there? Awesome. Yeah, really good. Um, like I say, there was any, it was everything from like the classic pirate salty sea dog to uh, French dressmakers to um, me who was like like I said just in basic pirate kit to people like red ex red coats. Did you feel like you're at Tatuga? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh, it was brilliant. It was it it felt really, it was so immersive. Like it was, and also because so, so, so many people knew the shanties, so like it was just perfect. And at one point. The LED lights went out in the tavern, so it was literally just lit by four candles. Oh, that's so and we were cool! All, yes. Like singing sea shanties. Oh, ah, oh, what amazing start to the weekend! Yeah. Uh, did they have merchant and vendors there for equipment like guns, swords, weapons? So they clothing? only had one, as far as I know, and okay. it was the gun salesman. Okay. So I uh, went to a guy and bought my gun. So you need to buy all your kit before you go down. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's nothing like Empire. There's not like a trade in a row. Like you, the only thing I could buy there was my gun. So yeah, the Saturday is your first full day. So time ins at ten, and then timeouts at. You one say in the first morning. full day. It's your only full day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> first and last full day. Yeah. <laughs> so this was where most of the shit happens. Is it good shit? Uh, out of character. Yeah, in character. Mm. Mm. Uh, so. Oh, How so was the weather? The weather was fine. Beautiful good. all weekend. We such good luck this year. Yeah. Timing's not strict. It starts at 10, but people are kind of like timing-ish until like it's properly like something happens, basically. Yeah. Okay. So they're doing first watches, patrols around the island. I don't go to any of these at first. I'm kind of walking around, vibing, chatting to people. A few people come start to come back injured. Um, I hear a couple of arguments here and there. I speak to a few of the other players. There is a woman that works in the tavern who is who had a game called Knifey Handy. And if you walk into the tavern, 
she's like, we'd have to play knife your hand. And if you say yes, she throws a knife at you. And if you have to catch it, and if you catch it, you win. But sometimes if you catch it, you lose. You yeah, know what I mean? it depends on <laughs> how you catch it. Exactly. Uh, really good foot. She was winding me up all weekend, and it was so funny. Um, didn't know what to do. Like, Brandon did not know what to do. It was just like, are you taking piss? Because I don't like it when people take out the piss of me. Why are we having this? <laughs> and also, I said at one point, they, they asked if I was lying about something. I said, I don't lie. I said, I actually don't lay. No, I don't lie. Lie, as in I don't tell fibs. Oh, lie. <laughs> it was really funny. To take the, I was like, don't take the piss out of me. I'll fuck you. <laughs> um, it was really good. Um, I had my powder converted to my 10 sugar sachets for my, uh, for my pistol and also to trade around and give to the crew. Just spent the first part of the morning kind of vibing. Oh, I was just about to say for uh, giving the your crew the powder, that's a way to sweeter them up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I officially joined the chariot. So nice. I officially became a crew member of the crew of the chariot. None of the people, apart from someone I knew, I'd met a couple of times before, but most suspect online was in the chariot. The other two people I knew were in other crews. One guy was on the Santiana, one guy was on the Diamond. So, again, we've heard, re- we've heard rumour that British are here. And then, oh, whilst we're all signing up to the crew, we're all chatting to our new captain. And we can kind of hear kind of off to our right. <laughs> Guns start firing. And we're like, we're like, what the fuck is going on? And we see a bunch of pirates have wandered into camp and started shooting one of the crew. Oh, wow. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? The captain of that crew marches over to our captain and goes, my crew just got attacked because of you. No, what, the f- what are you talking about? It's like, you were supposed to keep the Hornet in prison and they escaped. This is your fault. And they just came, demanded to draw my crew. And when I said no, they shot me. And it was it was like, I can't be held responsible for that. What are you talking about? The Hornet, it's not my fault. And it was the like straight away, like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on? Um, so really cool kind of explosive start yeah. to like RP like which is completely different to Empire because yeah. like, that doesn't really happen as like, it does it every now and again we talk about like the Matilda Fisher thing mm-hmm. but like that doesn't really happen no um, that was a really cool moment and then our first mission that we did as a group so basically what you do is you it's almost like skirmishes where you'll leave the main kind of area and you'll go off into the woods to do stuff and the first thing we were doing, it's like, oh, there's a treasure cache that someone's found. And we're the merchants, so we might as well go find it. It's like, cool, cool. A scout. Oh, yeah, NPCs come into the town as scouts. Okay, and they're like, cool. oh, we found this. Come follow us, and we'll follow them, kind of thing. Yeah. And we follow them along. And it's like, yeah, it's a cache. We've been told there's something up here. It's just up there, and we go down this path. And we're going down the woods, and then we have to go through shrubs, ducking under trees and stuff. Come to these little wooden stairs, and we start to hear voices. And we're like, fuck fuck you get to these stairs and it's kind of one of those like it's like a little bridge that goes over a little river there's a hut next to it and we see a bunch of people sat around laughing and cheering it's like and we start stealthing and then they go who's that in the bush and we're like fuck who is it who the fuck are they are they our crew no I don't recognise them come out we can see you who are you from the hornet fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> and they've got the resources that we were about to go find and we're like right we need to get them off them and also, the captain's normal made agreement to not suffer the hornets to live. Yeah. So we were like, okay, how are we going to do this? And then someone fires a shot by accident from our side. And Ooh. all of a sudden, everyone's pulling pistols out. Oh, <laughs> so the general rule in ILAP, I don't know, I kind of said this, but it's like, so when there's no nerf pilots or anything, yeah. like you point a gun at someone, get their attention, press the trigger. If they think that would have hit them, they get hit. That's the, yeah. the whole thing. And then I'm obviously, Brandon is not a fighter. <laughs> So Brandon's like hiding in the bush, like fuck, like peering out with his pistol, firing out at people, um, which you can only do once. So I'll yeah. be very cautious with it. Um, and then eventually I'm like, they start to scarper off. I'm like, right, we need to kill them and get this stuff. So I start to venture out into the woods. Uh, and then one of them comes nearby and runs up to me, bam, shoot him down. They go down. Like, oh my God. I've run out of shot. And I go down to one of the dead people. I was like, hey, is your gun loaded? And they're like, yeah. I was like, cool. <laughs> Put my gun back, pick their gun up. I was like, I'll give it back to you. And then oh, take yeah. the second gun, start walking off to shoot people, sort of like getting panicked. Um, and then they all start to run. And then we have this, it's like this awesome kind of, it literally swashbuckling kind of moment. Like everyone's yeah. like, oh God, and fighting with swords and jumping around and firing guns, it. chasing for, and then at one point, 
I see one of the members of the Hornet running through a bush, that, and I kind of like scoop round to go behind him. I do kind of want to be a swashbuckler. That sounds it's, like so much yeah, fun. Yeah, it does look good fun. This guy comes out and goes, on oh, guard! So when I'm like, I run around the bush, oi! <laughs> Shoot it, me goes down. I lose my pistol. I have to go back and find it later. Mm. Get my sword, turn around, and this guy who I've just shot, it's injured but not dead, and starts hitting me with his sword. I hit him back, someone else hits him, he goes down. And as I'm running off, one of the NPCs stops me and gives me a little card. It says, gut wound. I'm like, uh, you've been injured in the gut. Um, it's hard for you to move. See a surgeon. I was like... Oh, cool. Like a traumatic wound yeah, card. Yeah, basically, Empire traumatic wound. I was like... Bruh, bruh. <laughs> I had to run off to um, the side. And I was like, I need the surgeon. Where's the surgeon? Someone's like, we sent them back to camp to get assistance. I'm like, why did the surgeon leave wah, wah, wah. Um, so I'm lying on the floor someone gives me a scarf to hold over my wound as I'm just squirming on the ground oh my god fuck and it's like someone get, a surgeon comes over reads the little ticket it's like we need uh, gunpowder to cauterise the wound <laughs> fucking come here <laughs> gunpowder <laughs> to cauterise the wound they put the gunpowder on light it and then, ah. and then, and then oh, I like cool. throw up the, the sugar close it I'm like please do something about this get that kind of cauterised yeah. and then uh, he's like right okay it's cauterized. Uh, don't have any opium though, so it's gonna it's gonna hurt for a while. I'm like, oh, fantastic! Can I move? He's like, probably not. I'm like, excellent news. Someone's left a rifle next to me. I can't yeah. fire rifles. Yeah. No one knows I can't fire rifles, so I pick up the rifle <laughs> and, and pretend. As, as NPCs go walking past, I aim it at them and they run back again. Someone I goes, love that. do you know how to use this? I'm like, no. It's like <laughs> it's not cheating because you're not. You're I'm not, not pretending gonna use to fire it. I'm, it. I'm threatening to use it. I'm like, Ugh! you're doing what your character would do, exactly, like pretend yeah. to be armed. Uh, did fire it, and also I was quite obviously handling it really badly. Like yeah. I was kind of like holding it stupidly, but a glance of an eye, like, people don't know, they run off. Yeah, it's like you see a gun, you run. Like <laughs> someone went past me. Do you know how to use that? I'm like, no, can't you tell? Um, like, yeah, totally. Oh, it was so fun. Um, and then I had to hobble back to town. We got the food. So basically, in the stuff was food supplies. We got the food. We start to take it back. Uh, we get back and I get um, given some opium uh, to kind of quell my pains. So you got to role play opium. Got to what role was play like? taking opium. I didn't really, I didn't, because it's not like a, I, I didn't role play it as like I'd taken enough to be high. It was just enough yeah. to kind of quell the pain kind of thing. Um, the milk of the poppy. Yeah, basically. It's like it's not going to get me high. It's just going to No, I'd love it if you just made like the odd loopy statement or something. There was someone you know? that was full on high from the opium <laughs> wandering around. It's like really low, um, either like lost fault of blood, so yeah. <laughs> it's like high. So you said your, your first mission? Well, whilst the chariot, More or less. we're all getting healed. Where's the food gone? What do you mean? <sighs> Where's the food gone? Someone from the Santiago just took it. What? Ah, so this and is where it comes the, into what you were saying. Someone from the Santiago had taken the food, and we were like, what the fuck do well, they think well, they're doing? Well, you've got to hand it to them. No guts, no glory. And we came back, and we were like, who the fuck do you think you are? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, you took our food. I'm like, no, we didn't. And this is the first falling out, as far as I knew, between the chariot and the Santiago. Yeah. Don't think it actually was the first falling out, because something else happened, which I found out later. Um, another thing had happened... The collection plate of the church had been stolen from. Ooh. Santiana plate. So Santiana is full of religious zealots. Yeah, they were say. furious. And they blamed your crew. Or... Blame, well, so. Or was it your crew? <laughs> there was. So there was another skirmish later. Another thing they were doing, uh, ambushing, ambushing some British. And as we go to go on it, this guy, this Irish guy, kind of all wearing green, turns around, and goes, "I'll be fucked if the chariot are coming on this mission. Fuck off." And we were like, whoa, what? It's like, I'm not having you on this mission. You'll steal it. I went, sorry? It's like, why on earth would we... Why are you calling me a thief? It's like, because you are. You're a th- you're all thieves, the whole ship. You are kind of pirates. Yeah, but like, not from other pirates. It's mm. against yeah, the, it's against the code, code, me lad. Honor amongst thieves, isn't it? Exactly. exactly. The more guidelines and actual <laughs> rules. <laughs> and we were like... Me and this other guy from the chariot were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um... As it transpired, <laughs> earlier that morning, one of the members of our crew named Annabelle, who I had nicknamed Frenchie, because they were French, mm. uh, basically had pissed off this individual who was named Psalms, like from the Bible. The Bible, Psalms, yeah. yeah. He was called Psalms. And she pissed him off because he was... I can't remember what the fucking context was, but in the argument, she knocked his Bible to the floor using her sword. Didn't go down particularly well. He was absolutely fucking furious yeah. with her. 
and by extension our whole crew. Then when he found out the collection plate had been stolen from, blamed it on us. Yeah. So the whole crew painted with one tar brush, and I was like, you fucker. Me and this other guy spent some time on this skirmish trying to help, basically. Mm. Doing as much as we can to try and help find the loot, kill the British. And we actually also, one of us, carried that guy back to town. We were talking to him, helping him. The whole way down, he's berating him back about, oh, shit, we're a ship full of um, thieves with stolen from the collection plates, foul, we're whole house. dropped him and left him. World terrible, <laughs> carrying him back, trying to be civil the whole way down. And he was not having any of it. And we were like, what the... And it was at that point when Brandon went, all right, fuck him. Yeah, leave him. <laughs> fuck him. But still time, I was like, then I realised there was an opportunity to patch things up. Yeah. I was like, okay, do you know what? If we just get Frenchie to apologise, maybe we can move on. Kiss the tip. Kiss the tip. <laughs> tip. Lop some tops, kiss the tip. <laughs> and we were like, maybe we forget to apologise, it'll be fine. She was like, I do not know what, I'm, what I did wrong. Ah, I was only a bookie. <laughs> just like fully like... She yeah. was, like, refusing to apologise. It was absolutely hysterical. Um, and this, so we had two French people on our crew, and together it was uh, Genevieve, or Cuffs, because she had frilly cuffs, and Frenchie, because she was French, which is funny because there was four French people, but I called her Frenchie. Yeah, she was uh, the most French. Not even. I just was like, Frenchie. Um, <laughs> the, the least distinct French. Exactly. No, not even. Again, <laughs> just I called her Frenchie, and I went, mm, there's three other French people. Frenchie's fine. Yeah. Uh, One of them can be called Frenchie, exactly, that makes sense. Exactly, exactly. Uh, they were hilarious the whole weekend, um, but oh, the whole fucking saga of that apology was so funny because she refused to do it. Mm. And she went to go to apologise to him with some cake, and he wasn't in. So she went, okay, if he's not in to receive my apology, I guess he's not having my apology. Contract quest mark too. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> she went back to the hut, Went back to our little place, and then he was told that she was going to apologise. And he was like, I'm not, if, if she's going to apologise, she can come here and apologise. And we're like, mate, please. And she tried. <laughs> my, my quote from this whole thing was, I just want a fucking easy life. Please just give me a fucking easy life. And he was like, I'll come. I'll come and she can apologise. I was like, okay, we can move this all behind us. I don't like him. Don't like him at all. Not one bit. But we can move on. Also, all this is I see. All of this is icy. Yeah. Oh, obviously, yeah. Obviously, this guy was really funny. We had a good chat afterwards. Um, it's quite cathartic over, having the uh, 10 conflicts. Oh, <laughs> and she's standing there, and as he arrives, she starts eating cake, and she's like, bonjour, would you take any cake? And he's like, no. And she's like, okay, rude. <laughs> Puts the cake down, and she just stands there with and eats cake in a way, I have ne- like, with so much sass. I've never, <laughs> and literally, he's just like, you've got 15 seconds to apologise. And she's like, <laughs> no okay <laughs> and just stood there whilst he stood there eating cake just looking at him like no and just like and he went fuck this is a farce and she left I was like French I'm gonna fucking kill you <laughs> it is contract quest it part is, two it is it is literally I was like French I'm gonna fucking kill you please I just I just make just make this fucking easy for I us all I feel like I need to have an in-game conflict with someone then just refuse to apologise and yeah. be a little bitch about it yeah I think you should uh, it was so funny it's um, a good content clearly <laughs> this was kind of like just the Santiana and the Chariot all weekend were at each other's throats there was loads of arguments around it Loads of shouting, like yelling matches, um, ridiculousness. Our captain tried to speak to their captain. Our captain tried to speak to their first mate. He kept telling him to fuck off. Some insults were traded. Apparently at one point our captain called the crew brain dead, but he was like, I didn't call them brain dead. I asked them if they were brain dead. <laughs> it's an important distinction. It was like a whole, the whole weekend was us trying to apologise, then telling us to fuck off, then asking for compromise and us being like, we've already tried to come to you. Obviously, it's a very biased perspective. The whole thing yeah. was just ridiculous. It was hilarious. Um, but in character, absolutely furious the whole yeah. way through. There's loads of skirmishes with the British, some really good stuff. There's loads for me to talk about, kind of me skirting through bushes. At one point, we were like, the British had taken one of the Santiana prisoner, so we'd all gone to help, and we were all sneaking through the bushes to sneak around the back of them. Um, and then eventually, they were like, the, the, the British were like, right, we have our rifles trained on the prisoner. We're going to back away. Until and don't come and get them to our outside, or we'll shoot their head off. And we're like, okay, that's fine, it's fine. They're all doing it. We're all hiding in the bushes, waiting. And then he was like, they're out of sight. Get it. Go, go, go. And then we all just charge after the British with pistols blazing. They're doing their fully military lines, like <gasps> doing all like the calls and stuff, like the like formation, pressure. formation, reload. Everyone's waiting. Guns fire. Everyone sprints because they then got to reload. Firing. Did he fire in volley? 
Yeah. Nice. Chasing you. Yeah, so you hear all the crack, 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 crack. And then like with the chasing them down the woods as they sprint down, turn around, this awesome chase. They start to go into their fort. At one point, I'm like hiding in the bushes, then leap across to the bushes, start to skid along and hiding. One of my friends is dressed in a red coat. I see him rolling on the floor. Don't realise it's my friend. Pull the trigger. Sorry, pull, load my gun and go yeah. to fire. He rolls over. I see his face. I'm like, fucking hell, never mind. Someone goes, has he got anything on him? He's one of us. And he's like, fuck <laughs> off. Just on the floor. Um, it was basically just a whole weekend of swashbuckling, chasing British, fighting enemy pirates. Um... You've, awesome you've got thing. me sold. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, the, the, the crux of the weekend, I feel, was the British are here, right? Mm. And all the captains have a meeting. The scouts have come. And they've looked at the fort and they've seen there's two gaping holes on the side of the fort that people could fit through. They've missed it. They've been pulling it up. And we're like, okay, so we could fit a crew in there. And we're like, if we starve them out, we'll be fine. We'll go in, steal all the resources, get out. We'll get two distractions. We'll have some people, some British, some of the fops that come with us, make them pretend to be really posh and like, oh no, we've become marooned on this island. British people, please help us. <laughs> we got some people dressed... Help me, yeah, help me. Basically, we got some British people dressed in ex-red coats, dressed in red coats, okay. to go march in, to be like, sorry, we came late, to also cause a distraction, while some of the diamond would sneak in the side, steal the resources, get out. Nice. So that was the plan. Um, Did it go to plan? That's the question. We were all lying in ambush, so if they all ran out, we'd shoot the British. Mm. And we all, like all of us, like 50 of us all sneak off. We all hide in the bushes, like good old pirates standing there in the moon, like full moon in the moonlight, sneaking in the dark, waiting. And then we're there for like 20 minutes. <laughs> the longest fucking wait in my life. I was like, I'm getting sick of this. Yeah. I said, if everything goes, because if everything went well, there would be no conflict. we for 20 minutes. Next thing I hear is someone tramping down the track. We've been betrayed. Get out, pirates, get out. We're going back. We've been betrayed. And we're like, what the fuck has happened? She's like, Israel, Captain Israel Hands. He's working for the fucking British. <gasps> Plot oh, twist. Yeah. And we were all like, dun, dun, dun. what the fuck? And we like, we were just like, so this guy who's been like, this religious zealot, head of the Santiana, has been working for the British the whole time. And we were just like, What? The fuck? And then we all went back to town to fucking lynch <laughs> the Santiago crew. Like, did you fucking know? It's like, why would we know? We got here yesterday. How the fuck would we know this? It's like, where's his quartermaster? He's in there too, because he was the only the member of Santiago that was with them before we yeah. all arrived, NPC. And the Santiago hold themselves up. People were shouting like, I'll fucking kill you. What the fuck have you done? You call me? I was like, you call us thieves, you fuckers. You're working with the British. That so intense. Oh my Literally, God. It was like a, the village, the town was full of people screaming, like talking to Santiago. And they were like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know who these people are. Obviously the chariot are like, yeah. you fuckers. You've been calling us shit all weekend and here you fucking are. Self-righteous. Oh my God. It was like, it was next level like um, fury. And then someone from the Diamond comes. Where did you all go? They say. We're like, we thought you'd come with us. It's like, no. We've lost someone. There's someone trapped. We've all left, but there's a prisoner. So one of the Diamond crew was stuck in the British fort with all the British and Captain Israel hands. And we're like... Oh, no. We're like, right, go get him. We need to go get him. Rally a pie. And we all start walking out. And I haven't got the permission to say the character name, but um, I'm speaking to one person. I was like, fuck Israel hands. We'll kill him. She goes, I know. I was like, what do you mean you knew? She goes, oh, well, I knew was, there were suspicions about him not being not working for the British. And I was like, you fucking knew? And she was like, yeah. I was like, why don't you fucking tell us? And she was like, well, it wasn't certain. I was like, well, but good or bad information, we needed to fucking know. And then I started telling everybody that she knew. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone that she knew. I was like, she, someone fucking knew. Someone in camp knew. And I told them who it was. Because like, Brandon was furious. Brandon... Brandon has very much a one-track mind. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was like, furious that happening. I love how you're not afraid to be a dick in character. Yeah, it wasn't even like a dick. I was like... I don't know, because she could get lynched for that. <laughs> well, like, someone's been kidnapped for this. Someone, yeah. someone is going to die because of your actions. Fuck you. Marched off. Also started an argument with a Frenchman, because he was saying, we should not be going, this is stupid, we're all going to die. I turned around to him and said, are you going to... I said, come with us, go home. Either way, stop fucking moaning. And I did that like a couple of times. He goes, somebody better hold me back and I'm going to shoot this man in the head if he disrespects me one more time. And I was like, fuck off. And we were like, oh, in a rage. Marched back to the fort, 
trying to like, extract the diamond people out, but we couldn't. There's 200 British soldiers in the fort, we were told. Obviously, it wasn't really. But there's 200 oh, yeah. British <laughs> soldiers in the fort, and we were like, we can't take it. We'll be fucked. We're absolutely fucked. Um, there was lots of harassment. The gate, lots of people were going, and we were like, you, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid, you'll die. Loads of people starting to retreat. And then I was went a bit further forward. People kept coming out of the bushes, and there was this moment where like, click, 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 pointing at them. What ship are you with? And they're like, whoa, 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 with the diamond, with the diamond. Right, fuck off. Like, kind of like yeah. waiting for the British to sneak out and kill us. And they tell us that the member of the diamond that they've got is going to be executed tomorrow at 11 a.m. And we have till then to turn ourselves in. We get back to town. We find that Israel Hands has been negotiating with us. He, I think he'd got the crew of the Hornet to sign up with the British as privateers yeah. for the British Army. Mm. And they were going to offer us the same deal. And he'd already said yes to that, and he was going to try and sell us out to get us to do it. Ah, they did that uh, in real life, like Benjamin Hornet, Golden, all that lot, signing over to save the skins for the English. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us to do it. And we were like, we were literally were just about to get our new home. We're not going to lose it now. Yeah. And we need to get it back. But also, we're all pirates. So everyone's like, obviously, like... We're not all going to die for one person, but fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> we need to drive the British away. Um, the priest, Psalms, became the new captain of the Santiana, which went down like a fucking lead balloon. Yeah. With, That's uh, what a player character has been risen in yes, ranks. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I think eventually a lot of the captains will be players. That's um, cool. But we... Also, my mate, who plays Talabrin, was on the Santiana, and we were friends. We'd become... Good friends in character already. Yeah. And he was on a ship I didn't like, and I kept checking in with him in character, just being like, just, you know, this grudge I have was not with you, specifically with your captain, nothing to do with you kind of thing. But you could tell, like, this tension was building between us. Like, we're friends, but there's tension between our crew, and it was really fun. You're going to end up like a pirate house of the dragon, you being Rhaenyra, him being Alison. <laughs> it was literally, it was like, he was like, oh, look... Oh, it was crazy. He started to talk to our captain because our captain didn't get on with the new captain. So much fucking drama. Um, I then, the person I'd, I'd found out had knew about information. I found my facts. Turns out that uh, like other people knew these this information, other captains knew this information. They hadn't just kept it to themselves. I was like, oh, sorry about that. Hope we can move on from this. <laughs> and then left. And people kept going to all night being like, do you fucking know? Which was like... No, I didn't fucking know. And I was like, if they, do, if they come to you again, just send them to me and I'll correct them. Don't you worry, it's fine. And I spoke to her out of character and she was like, to be honest, like it was absolutely fine. Good role play. They were, like, they were like, that's your character. Your character, that's exactly how yeah. your character. It was in character for you. And then afterwards I was like, it's fine. We'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll be friends. It's all right. I understand the situation now. Yeah. So the plan the next day <coughs> was to ambush the execution, Ooh. save them and bring them back to camp. Yeah. Lots more politics happened all through the evening. So many interactions, I can't even begin. Like, my whole crew, everyone on the chariot, if you're listening, absolutely incredible. Loved the whole weekend. The roleplay was phenomenal. Um, just had an absolutely great time, just laughing, joking, eating cake and oranges and taking the piss out of the Santiana. It was just, the whole weekend was so funny. I'm so goddamn jealous. Uh, and then another evening of drinking, sat by a fire, smoking a pipe, singing sea shanties. Nice. It was... Sweet. Oh fuck! It was so good. All of us just laughing, having a few like schemes, chatting about stuff, what we're planning on doing, who we like, how to resolve tensions, things like this. And then I had to get a good night's sleep for a big battle the next day. Um. But yeah, so that was kind of like Saturday. It, it's like you say, a completely different empire. It's yeah. just full on plot surf. You on the plate if you want to pick it up. Um, too many interactions for me to talk about because it's so funny because it feels so much shorter than Empire because it's so much like so much is happening it's like condensed um, but again it's the same thing as usual I had so many interactions but with less people so it's kind of like the more, more intense yeah so I had like a bunch of interactions with like everyone on the, overall in the chariot best crew not biased Talk a little bit about. biased no not at all uh, oh, the fucking I was saying this the um, what, 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 tribalism mm. that happened out of this was crazy well, it's like football tribalism. Yeah. Effectively, for something that doesn't matter, you get so invested in your little oh. tribe. In groups and out groups, isn't it? Just a game you're like so passionate about it and you want to represent your brand most of all. Yeah, basically. It was absolutely awesome. And that was Saturday night. Saturday night and then we stayed, I stayed up until three. Most people went to bed about half one. 
and we I was chatting with people at Empire all night yeah. after that oh, because nice. all nice. of them go to Empire. So we talk about the different stuff they do, who people are, what they think of the game, what they think of different people. You'll have to stuff. introduce us uh, next thir- well on Thursday when we go to Empire. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Bunch of people like from different nations. There was quite a few people in my crew that were Dornish, which was quite fun. Ooh, nice. But yeah, awesome weekend. Shall we move on to Sunday? Yeah. So the Sunday was very much centered around this big battle. Yeah. So we're all getting stocked up. Also, I forgot to kind of mention another big thing of this quest of this weekend is we need to get our ships ready to set sail. So this is part of the game I wasn't really involved in, but it's about collecting the resources for your ship so that you're ready to set sail yeah. uh, in downtime, basically. Yeah. And depending on how many resources you get, how many crew you have, how many traders you have, determines how successful you're going to be. Oh, that's cool. I like that type of thing. Yeah, I like that. So it was literally like our quartermaster was spending all weekend trying to make sure we had the resources to sail efficiently and have a good... Prosperous. Uh, good, prosperous kind of in-between... Uh, good, prosperous downtime. downtime. And so we were... That was kind of going in the background. I wasn't massively involved with that. I was providing powder here and there and pointing people in the right direction. But Branton is a better smuggler than he is trader. Like, I am a trader, I guess, because I'm, yeah. I'm still good at that, but most of what I, he does is smuggling through coves and knowing people and connections. It's not as much the selling and the buying. Embrace your inner Davos Seaworth. Yeah. His, um, my, so his nickname is Smokey. Okay, I like that. Uh, I had a fun line which I gave to our surgeon, which was, um, uh, my name is Branton Reed, Smokey to my friends. And he went, oh, so can I call you Smokey? I said, I study on. <laughs> well, I just met you. <laughs> Um, but that was really funny. He was playing like a really kind of like posh role to do dandy. He was yeah. like, oh, I decided to try life as a pirate. Um, was trying to become a better pirate all weekend. It was absolutely hilarious. Oh, very much Steed Bonnet, the uh, gentleman pirate. Yeah, he was, Love it. It was literally like, oh, my father was a surgeon. I picked up a few rudimentary skills, but in, oh, it was so funny. Um, but yeah, got ready the next day. Um, people are still kind of finalised, get our ships ready to go. Then we go to do our ambush, we get our weapons ready, we're sharing powder out amongst the crew, we get our guns loaded and ready to go. And we set off. And we go on this fucking ambush again. Once again, we're sitting for ten minutes, lying and waiting. I'm imagining, like, such an epic scene in my head, and I know, obviously, it's a small-scale laugh. Like, it's not going to be, like, some guys at the gallows and you're all like, yeah! Well, it fucking feels like it. We let the diamond go first, because it's, like, their crew. Like, we're going to save them. And we go through the woods and we trape along and we're sneaking and stealthing and we're hiding in the bushes. Fucking Cuffs and French... No, French didn't bring an instrument or anything, but Cuffs brought her fucking tambourine. Oh, nice. On a stealth mission. <laughs> so we're trying to God hide in the bushes here. Cuffs, I swear to fucking God, keep that fucking tambourine still. I want to invest in a hurdy-gurdy now. <laughs> Absolutely. But we, we lie in wait and then all of a sudden the British come in. So we swarm them. Uh, and like every time as they go down, like a good uh, powder trader, every single time someone goes down, have you been searched? No. Get a couple of pieces of eight, bit of gunpowder, uh, loot bodies and get ready to go. How many English do you reckon they roughly put on the field for immersion? Oh, God. Um, do they have 50? Like there was n- well, there's never more than 10 at once. Okay. But they come in waves. Right. So obviously the, those, so people, respawn. those people, they even come straight back. Yeah. Uh, but then also, the crew of the Hornet, who are now privateers, keep appearing. Initially, we think they're pirates, and then they're not. The main objective of this, as well, is to get Israel hands. Mm. We need him back. We need to give him some good old-fashioned pirate justice. The Santiana want him back alive. He a the bastard. Yeah. Um, and we, basically, the British are coming. They've ma- we, the Diamond, I think, at this point, managed to save the person who had been taken prisoner. Cool. Start bringing them back. And we, uh, like, loads of mini skirmishes, basically. Um, and we do kind of, like, a fighting retreat back to the fort. We get pincered by the crew of the Hornet. Classic. Fighting them, looting them. Like, it's literally guns blaze. You can hear, crack, 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 on guard. Like, fighting the whole way through. Fighting retreat up to this fort. Slam the doors close on the fort. And then the British start coming up. And like we're, like, firing over the walls, firing at the gates. They're pushing around. Obviously, in between combats, we can reload our guns, get ready. Yeah. Um, and then kind of like bang firing over fences really fun to kind of like push the gate open a little bit shoot someone watch them go down then come back in again um, this kind of going back and forth at one point I'm like I go to the gate I go to lean out to shoot someone pull my trigger bad powder my cap doesn't go off and then a British marine shoots me and it was like, it's, again it's you think you got hit and I'm like oh and I kind of fire back clutching my shoulder Shouting for a surgeon because I've just been yeah. shot in the shoulder. 
Uh, and someone comes up to me. It's the first time I've ever had fake blood put on me in lard. Oh, nice. So oh, nice. Lying against the tree, having like uh, the bit, there's a shrapnel pulled out fake, whilst fake blood's being rubbed onto my shirt, wrap a bandage around me. And she's like, right, you should be good to go now. Puts gunpowder on it, put, gives me some opium, and I'm good to go. Um, but it was really good fun. Like, it was really good. Um, so the fabric merchants give you fabric to use for bandages. That's oh, cool. their yeah. kind of uses. Um, and then eventually, someone's like, it's fucking Israel hands. He's there. Get him. So the British have gone and we pour out of the gates trying to get this guy. Santiago is fighting pretty bloodily to get to them. Obviously get knocked out because they're going, they're just gunning for it. Broken legs. Everyone's knocked out. And a lot of people have been saying, we want his hands because his name is Israel hands. Everyone wants hands. Oh, how funny. <laughs> Everybody wants hands his hands. And we, hands. We, we get to him and it's, by the time I get to him, He's been taken out. We were supposed to be apprehending him. Interrogating People him. were fucking shooting the shit out of this guy. He was down, bleeding out, with an axe in his chest. <laughs> and the, the person who was, someone had an axe in his chest, goes, if I take this axe out because it was a trauma card, he dies. Does anyone have any opium to cure him? And they were like, no. She's like, all right, fuck it. Pulls the axe out and he dies. Because <laughs> she's like, we never opium. We wouldn't yeah. go back to town. He was going to die anyway. And then me and another member of the chariot, the first thing we do, run over to him, grab his hands, get our swords, cut his hands off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we've got Israel hands, his hands. Did you have any kind of fist rep for that? Not that that would have been amazing. We did later. Oh, point, sweet. We just like pocket the hands and we're like, God, his hands. I see someone else is like literally, while she's got his axe and he's like looting him, has like a fucking shit ton of resources. I was like, you fucker. Like yeah. literally dripping with coin. And then. Is that the point? I suppose, oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then. So you did get some booty. I did get some booty. Hands. Uh, yeah. And then we get back. Um, basically, the British declare that they're going to tell the Navy we're here. Our home is not safe. So we're going to try and destroy their ship is the whole thing. Yeah. Go back to town. And then we're like, you know, mixed mood in the air. Yeah. But we've got hands as hand. Someone who has fizz reps for hands gives us one. Who has fizz reps for hands, no honestly? Idea. But we had... Basically, I'd taken some hands, and there'd been some confusion, because obviously it's hard to fizz rep that you've lost your hands. Yeah. So a member of the Santiana had also taken the hand, and I was like, I saw him die. I saw two members of our crew take him. We have them both. Yeah. But I said to him, but, and it was the first mate who I knew. Yeah. And I said, it was now a first mate. He wasn't really now, yeah. it was because of the re-election, because yeah, his yeah. real hands had gone. And I went, I'm going to give you a hand. As a sign of solidarity between our two crews. So he did had you, hand did you shake hand. hands? I popped it in his pocket. <laughs> no, no. You should have got like your crew's hand and his crew's hand and just given them a little shake. shake that hands. would have been well. These hands cause more drama than you might think. Yeah. So. Or well, even after they've uh, been dismembered. Yes. So <laughs> we get we give him, we have this situation. I give him a hand. We have a hand. We fight some more British. We retreat back. We're celebrating that we have a hand, and then someone gives us. A hand. Someone from the Santiago has a fizz rep for two hands and gives us one and oh, takes okay. one. And he's like, you have this, we'll have this. And we're like, yeah, we've got his hand, we've got his hand. And we have been having this argument with Santiago all weekend. We're celebrating the fact we've got a hand, having a great time singing our sea shanty. So the chariot has a sea shanty, so we've been singing that sea shanty. And then we hear wood, and we hear Chip, who is their carpenter, who's actually been doing carpentry all weekend. Is that what you call him, or is that his actual name? That's his name. Oh, okay. Right. Um, he's actually been doing carpentry all weekend. He's been getting logs, turning them into a wood bench, and then we also had a blacksmith there. So all weekend we had this kind of <laughs> ding, ding, ding in the background. It was so atmospheric. It was awesome. And they kind of stand up front. It's like crew of the chariot, come into the street now. And we're like. All right. We're like we're all really jovial, so we're just like, oh, hello. We bring our cake and our oranges, we're, yeah. and we're like, Captain's <laughs> standing there, and there's this big kind of like, right, there's been some bad blood between us this weekend, yeah. and I think it's time we put behind it. I dug a hole in the chapel. I have a hatchet. Apologize to us. Bury the hatchet, and we'll move on. Literally. And we were like, we have been trying to resolve this all, all fucking weekend. Yeah. Don't you dare. Act like it's our responsibility to do this. And then this is a shit slinging match. Like shouting at each other in the street. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? I just How dare you do this to us? I just pictured the other crew just like, oh, so uncivilized. And they were watching just like, 
What the fuck? Yeah, um, the devil's daughters sound like they should be the real savages. Yeah, but they're, you like, two they're scary. Have... Don't mess with the devil's daughter. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> they just we... sat there being real. She's like, no, no one's going to mess with us. It, it was a literal shit-slinging match. We were fucking not literal, metaphorical. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> well, I know you're a powder monkey, but... <laughs> but we were screaming. It was such a good bit of role play. Um, eventually, the hatchet was buried. Yeah. Um, not before they declared an official Irish grudge. Ooh, oh. that doesn't sound like a buried hatchet to no, me. No, it doesn't. They did an official Irish grudge. Oh, and also they requested the hand back. So they wanted both of hands. Oh, hands. but but that's the peace hand. So we gave them the hand. Oh, no. Oh. They did later discover... You gave them someone else's hand. The bones were missing from said hand. How do you give them a hand and they not... I don't know where the bones went. I don't know who's got the bones. Do you, do you just suck out the bones or do you... Turn it into, you a, just, like, turn it into a chicken nugget? One by one? It was, um, look, look, I don't think they're happy. I think they're going to accuse us of something. But uh, We look forward to hearing about it next we time. We look forward to how that goes. Yeah. Um, so nonetheless, the Chariot and the Santiana have officially put this to bed. There were definitely still tensions in the air. So yeah. it's going to be interesting what happens next time we see them. Um, it was a whole weekend of back and forth, of refusing to trade. It's going to be like to a trade. will they, won't they, but it's will they, won't they kill each other. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, I... Yeah, no, it, it's been really fun. It'll be fun to see where it goes. I think if nothing else happens, we think we might be all right, but maybe try and avoid a bit of PvP. But it was good fun. Everyone had good, like most people, good fun. We were checking in with yeah, people. Yeah, it sounds were. like it's one, good fun. At one point, one of, the character, one of the players was screaming at one of the other players, storms off, and then runs back. Like, like if you put your like hand with two fingers in the air, it means like you're not there kind of yeah. thing. And he runs over to the guy who's screaming. I was like, hey, just checking in. You all right? It's like, oh, that's fine. always so it's nice. Like, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. And then, then <laughs> that's, that's fine, that's fine. Because it's like... Like yeah, you get in it, you get it's really intense. involved exactly. and intense. Would and you, you say, don't want to actually upset anyone. But would you yeah. say this much bleed in this event? I think some people were upset by some of it. I'll be honest. Okay. I think it was a bit much yeah. for some people, um, and I think you've got to be careful that it's all I see opinions. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't want to start bleeding it. Like we'll, we've joked about it, but all of it was I see. I spoke to the people that I had particular interactions with. I was like, "Thanks for a great weekend. That was really funny. Yeah, uh, really enjoyed it." You've got to be careful that you've got to make sure because you know the person who had that information about the yeah. Israel hands, which turned out to not be as bad as I thought it was. I was, when I went to them to speak to them about it, before the information was shown to me not to be that bad, I was going to say, if it turned out that it was bad, I was like planning to go like, hey, I'm about to go off at you. Is yeah. that all right? And then if they say no, I'm like, that's fine, I'll just leave. But yeah. you, they encourage you, like, if you're going to do something role-playing it's intense yeah. with someone, check in first, let yeah. them know so they know it's coming. Because as much as I'm down for some, like, pretty good role play if someone came and shouted at me i probably would like yeah oh see be a bit like fucking hell yeah this isn't fun yeah yeah so like again that's <laughs> like it I'll... depends on your relationship like if one of you guys did it i could probably get really into that role play if yeah. some like stranger who i've not really yeah. met came and shouted at me as even if it was role play i'd probably still feel a bit taken aback. the only people i was aggro with were people who have already seen being being aggro yeah so you're like okay yeah. they're, they're kind of they're, if it was they're someone... in, that involved in that kind of role if, play yeah if it was someone i hadn't seen doing that i wouldn't yeah. do it because yeah. i'm someone like, right. like meekly hiding at the corner yeah. like <laughs> which is what i check in i'd be like hey are you all right for me to go up and if yeah. they just say no you storm off and you do it another way yeah exactly um but yeah, so it was absolutely awesome. We and then I guess the last thing to talk about, really, I'm sure I've missed a bunch of stuff. But the last thing to talk about really was we did how you do in downtime. So okay. all the crews yeah. were going into the office, and what you do is that everyone gets to roll dice, uh, and you need to reach 100 to be successful, and everything over that is like a bonus. Okay. Everybody, so the captain can roll three dice. Any officers can roll two dice, and all the other able seamen can roll one dice. <laughs> seamen. I knew you could do that. So, so like, quartermaster, first mate, ship's cook, smuggler, they can roll two dice, the rest of us can roll one, and we have to get to a total of 100. Cool. I think we have, like, 15, 16 crew. Right. I think. Maybe less than that. And then also all the positions got to roll. Yeah. And there's this tenth moment you have to roll them one by one. So the captain rolls his, then all the officers roll theirs. Oh, okay. roll oh that ones. sounds so tense. That as, sounds so great. cool. As they're tallying up. And they get, we don't get to 100, but we have traders. Yeah. And what traders can do, every trader can re-roll five of the dice. Ah, oh, that's cool. Um, to try and get them over. So obviously, naturally, you're going to re-roll ones and twos, mm. maybe threes. And we, being the chariot, had no shortage of traders. Yeah. We had like five traders. So that, we that would, sounds like your gimmick then. Yeah, exactly. Our whole thing is we're yeah, traders. Thing. We got five re-rolls of five dice. So a lot of our shit rolls we got rid of and we fucking knocked out of the water. Nice. Like we did like had an awesome kind of like rolls. There was a like we heard like five two like two three twos and two six and like loads of six 
three twos and two threes. That does sound like something in the game that can be quite easily exploited, though. Unless you want to go out and recruit more traders for every crew. That's... Well, no, but that, the, it's not well, the exploiting. That the, that's the mechanics of the okay, game. The point is that the crews that have the traders do the best because they do trading because in the downtime. That makes sense. It's less an exploiting thing. That's why the chariot's good at it, because we're traders. If the Santiago started recruiting traders, like, okay, you're changing the mood of the ship, which is fine. But then how do they catch it with downtime stuff, then? Well, because they... Be a you big get other bonuses for other stuff okay. and stuff like yeah. that. But like the reason the, the chariot is like it is good in downtime because the chariot is good in downtime. That's its whole yeah. shtick. Okay. Okay. But also like just having a lot of resources and money isn't necessarily what people go to lots no. for. No. Yeah. You know, it's so role play. We'll, the we'll be the rich crew. Cool. The others might not necessarily be the rich crew, but they also might be because they can also because we can't raid ships because we don't have enough cannons. But they can. The Devil's Daughter, I think, has got eighty cannons, so they can raid yeah. other ships. We can't really do that. So it's like how you've got different resources in Empire. So like, I'll have loads of herbs when I go in because I've got a herb garden, yep. but then you'll have random stuff because you've got military. Yeah, you some can end people... up with some really good stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we rolled loads of dice, did really well, and then had an awesome weekend. Wrapped up, spoke to loads of people I spoke to in character, out of character, big hugs. Went to the pub afterwards to have a chat. Made some amazing friends. Thank you to the best crew, crew of the Chariot. Um, I can't wait to see you all at Empire Player Events and back at Hoist. Yes. So, before we break off, is there anything you've forgotten? Speak anything, now or... Anything you missed that you can think hold of, your any piece? highlights? Yes, there is actually one moment I forgot to mention. Uh, this was on the Saturday, sorry. Um, no worries. So, the last kind of thing was, it was one of those where, so the Chariot's missions aren't always combat-oriented. Cool. It's like resource-oriented. We we're going to find this rum runner cache and we get to it and there's a bunch of other people there arguing over materials and we all sneak up on them and surround them. So like a few of us go up a hill, a few of us go to the bomb and they all of a sudden they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Cause they see the people in front of them first. Then they see like, there's a few of us like standing at the back. Yeah. Like I, I choose this moment to like pull out my pipe and we just kind of stand there watching them. They're like panicking. It's really good shit. And like watching them panic. And we start to mosey on down and they're talking. It's like, oh, you know, we just lost. We're drunk. We've lost. We've, he stole my resource. They're having like a petty squabble. And then they go, mention that they're from a ship. We go, oh, what ship? The Hornet. Everyone pulls out pistols. Bang, 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 bang. Like three of them go down. Just straight up kill them. One of them gets grabbed and has a whale uh, spear put in their back. Blimey. And they're like, and like, whoa, 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 calm down. Um, and it was just really intense. And I just leaned over to the captain and said, Captain, did we make a, make a promise to kill all the hornets? And they're like, yeah. And then we're going with a whale spear. <laughs> Stabs them in the back, hmm. chops them on the ground. Nice. Uh, but it was just this really cool moment of us all surrounding these traders, like 20 of us just be like, like a fucking film, like pirates kind of coming out of the leaves being like, yeah. what's this? What's going on here then? <laughs> I love it. Uh, but that was just like a, like a really fun like little moment, like a little expedition. It wasn't combat oriented, but mm. it was like really good pirate role play. Um, I think that's all I've forgotten. Um, everyone that I interacted with, thank you so much for an amazing weekend. And I can't believe I have to wait till summer next year to go again. I'm yeah. Sorry. Once again, I will reiterate, I'm incredibly jealous that my dream laugh and you got to live it. Hopefully Absolutely next year thing. I will be able to Definitely go. Next Definitely year. next year. There's like, if you book the time off. and I book the time off. Like... It's getting the tickets because apparently they go so quickly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, oh. But we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll go in. We'll, we'll, we'll leave. 100%. If um, not, I'll be a pirate and steal someone else's. <laughs> yeah. Well, the spirit of things. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I hope yeah. you enjoyed my chaotic ramblings. Um, I did. Excellent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you've enjoyed listening to something other than Empire, please let us know. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll try out some other LARPs. Yes, absolutely. I think we've got plenty planned that we want to do loads of player events. Definitely. Um, There's at least a but few. But you want to do year. most of the player <laughs> events. Yes. Unfortunately, we are out of season for a lot of them. Yeah. But thank you very much for listening to our, our salty version of uh, the podcast. Where we're <laughs> and we'll see you all next week. Nice, Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.